How much is your mask protecting you from COVID-19? I'll show you how to find out in just a minute. Here's a scoop. There's been a lot of debate over whether or not face coverings stop the spread of the coronavirus. The New England Journal of Medicine says wearing a mask outside healthcare facilities offers little, if any, protection from the infection, while the medical journal The Lancet says face masks could result in large reduction in the risk of infection, particularly if you use one of those N95 or similar respirators. Even our top COVID-19 expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, has gone back and forth on the effectiveness of masks. Here's what he said in March. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And here's what he said in June. But as I have been saying for some time, gathering in crowds is a risk. Gathering in crowds without a mask is an even bigger risk. So what are we to believe? If only there were some way of seeing how much protection our masks provide us from COVID-19 exposure. Well, maybe there is. COVID-19 particles are estimated to be around 125 nanometers. What's a nanometer? I didn't know either, so I googled it. It turns out that it's one billionth of a meter and way too small to see with the naked eye. Smoke, on the other hand, say from a cigar, can be seen and is larger than the coronavirus. Cigarette smoke particles range from 0.1 microns to 1 micron, or 100 to 1,000 nanometers, with the typical size of a cigarette smoke particle being around 0.25 microns. Cigars produce even larger smoke particles anywhere from 2 to 10 times the size of the coronavirus. So if cigar smoke can penetrate face masks, then surely COVID-19 can too, right? How much protection does your mask provide? Join me in taking the Cigar Smoke Challenge. I'll be testing four different face coverings for filtering cigar smoke. One is a gator, much like this one here. Second one is a dust mask. Third, surgical mask. Fourth, the elusive N95. And finally, a mask similar to one worn by Alyssa Milano. Just give me a couple of minutes to set up and don't go away. I'm back and we're ready for the cigar smoke challenge complete with an appropriate adult beverage. As you can see, I've secured masks to a one inch diameter pipe with rubber bands. These are a lot more tightly secured than people typically wear their masks especially that bag boy at the grocery store who seems to always have his nose hanging over the top of his mask when you shop. Warning the kids out there, don't try this at home without adult supervision. Come to think of it, don't try it at all. Let your parents do this. So let's start with the gator. Uh, earlier I showed you one that was in the red, white, and blue. This one is camouflage. Let's see how this one does in holding back the smoke. Obviously not much protection there. Next, we'll try this dust mask. You see these around town an awful lot. So let's see how well this one does. Obviously not an awful lot of protection there either. Next, we'll try a surgical mask. These are a little bit hard to get, but you still see a lot of people wearing them. Let's see how well this one does. Well, there's some protection there. A lot more than the other two, anyway. Next, we'll go to the N95, N95 equivalent. I should note that this one has been used and was getting ready to be thrown away, so we're not wasting a good N95 that could be used by somebody. So let's see how this one does.
quite a bit more protection from this one. Then the final one, let's call this the Alyssa Milano one. It's made with a doily, not that much different from the mask that she made for herself. Let's see how much protection she would get from this. Really none at all. So she'll be our nominee for the Darwin Awards this year. Obviously, no one's going to blow the coronavirus through a pipe placed directly on your face. At least one hopes not. But can this really be that much different than people shouting inches away from you at a protest march? Say a Black Lives Matter rally? There's some politicians now calling for making face masks mandatory nationwide. Aside from the obvious constitutional problems with the federal government imposing such a requirement, there's an obvious practical one too. As our admittedly unscientific study shows, not all masks are created equally. Some offer little protection at all, while some provide a lot. Some masks can even increase the risk of contracting COVID-19 if not worn properly or used repeatedly without being cleaned or replaced. So what are we going to do? Mandate people wear specific types of masks that are effective, but only available to first responders? Are we going to mandate people take courses for proper mask use? What about our eyes? A major entry point for the virus. Are we going to mandate the use of goggles as Dr. Anthony Fauci recently recommended? If you think your face mask makes you look like a dork, just look at how others will perceive you when the goggle mandates start. Merry Christmas. I like Santa. Yeah. So go ahead, wear a mask, but be realistic. Masks help on the margins. Some are better than others, but no mask makes you invulnerable. Anyone who suggests otherwise is just, well, blowing smoke. If you'd like to support our work, please consider donating to the National Center at nationalcenter.org backslash donate. And follow me on social media to be among the first to see future Scoop TV videos at David A. Ridenauer on both Twitter and Parlor. And that's the scoop.